In this video, I'll show you how bubble sort works and how to determine the time complexity of bubble sort. We want to sort these seven numbers with bubble sort. We compare two elements at a time starting from the left and swap them if they are not in the correct order. We start with the 6 and the 2. These are not in the right order and so we swap them. The 6 and the 4 are also not in the right order and we swap them too. The 6 and the 9 are in the correct order. The 9 and 3 are not, we swap them. And we do the same for the 9 and the 1 and the 9 and the 7. The greatest element has now been pushed all the way to the right and at the left of this element we mentally divide the array into a left unsorted and a right sorted part. We start again at the beginning of the array and compare the 2 with the 4. These are in the correct order and do not have to be swapped. The same applies to the 4 and the 6. The 6 and the 3 are in reverse order and we must swap them. We do the same for the 6 and the 1. The 6 and the 7 are in the correct order and do not have to be swapped. Now we have reached the end of the unsorted part and we move the separator one position to the left. We start again at the beginning. The 2 and the 4 are still in the right order. We have to swap the 4 and the 3, likewise the 4 and the 1. The 4 and the 6 are already in the correct order. Once again we have reached the end of the unsorted part and we move the separator further to the left. We start again at the beginning. 2 and 3 are in the correct order, 3 and 1 must be swapped and 3 and 4 are in the correct order. We move the separator further to the left and start again at the beginning. 2 and 1 have to be swapped, 2 and 3 are in the correct order. We move the separator one last time, one position to the left. The last two numbers of the unsorted part, 1 and 2, are in the correct order. And with that, all numbers are sorted and the bubble sort algorithm is finished. If we show the numbers as bars and play back the sorting process in fast motion, the elements gradually rise to their target positions, similar to bubbles, therefore the name bubble sort. Let's move on to the time complexity of bubble sort. We denote the number of elements to be sorted by n. In our example, n is 7. Let's start with the best case. In the best case, the elements are already in sorted order. On the first run, the bubble sort algorithm will perform 6 comparisons but will not swap any elements. Therefore, it will terminate immediately. The number of comparisons is the number of elements minus 1, so n minus 1. We can neglect constants like the minus 1 in the notation of the time complexity. Therefore, the best case time complexity of bubble sort is order n. We refer to this complexity class as linear since the cost grows linearly with the number of elements to sort. Where there's a best case, there's also, of course, a worst case. If in the beginning the elements are entirely pre-sorted in descending order, then in the first iteration we have 6 comparisons and 6 swaps. At the end of the first iteration, the last number is in the correct position. In the second iteration, we have 5 comparisons and swaps. And at the end, the last two numbers are in the right place. In the third iteration, we have four comparisons and swaps. In the fourth iteration, we have three. In the fifth iteration, two. And in the sixth iteration, one last comparison and swap. In total, we come to 21 comparisons and swaps. This can also be calculated as follows. Seven elements times six iterations divided by two, since on average, Half of the elements are compared per iteration. 7 times 6 is 42, divided by 2 is 21. If we replace 7 with n, we get 
n times n minus 1 times 1 half. Multiplied out, this becomes 1 half n squared minus n. For the notation of the time complexity, only the highest power of n is relevant, that is n squared. Therefore, the worst case time complexity of bubble sort is order n squared. Order n squared, or quadratic time, means the time required for sorting grows proportional to the squared number of elements to sort. An example. On my laptop, bubble sort needs about 5.5 seconds for 100,000 elements pre-sorted in descending order. For 1 million elements, that is 10 times as many, it does not need 55 seconds, but 550 seconds, that is 100 times as long. For 10 million elements, it would take 55,000 seconds. And for 100 million elements, 5.5 million seconds. That's pretty much two months. Quicksort needs only 10 seconds to do that. In the upper right corner and also in the video description, you will find a link to my Quicksort video. Unfortunately, the average case time complexity cannot be determined quite so vividly. Without proving this mathematically, you can roughly say that you have about half as many swap operations in the average case as in the worst case. That is because about half of the elements are in the correct position compared to the neighboring element. Therefore, the number of swap operations is 1 quarter n squared minus n. The number of comparisons is as follows. I copied that from Wikipedia. And as long as you don't study math or specialize in theoretical computer science, you don't necessarily need to understand that. What you should recognize, however, is that in both terms, the highest power of n is n squared. And therefore, also the average case time complexity of bubble sort is order n squared. I hope you enjoyed this video about bubble sort. You can reread the explanation on my website happycoders.eu. You'll find a link in the video description. In that article, you can also find the source code of bubble sort and the description of two approaches to parallelize bubble sort. In the video description, you will also find links to my other videos about sorting algorithms. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up or write me a comment. And if you want to be informed about new videos, feel free to subscribe to my channel. See you soon and happy coding!